All right, y'all. First and foremost, first and foremost, let's give all praise, honor, and glory. All right, y'all. First and foremost, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. We give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. We are live. We are live. We are live. We are live. That link is in the chat for Chief Priest Alazar Bun Lawyer, aka the Gorilla Hebrew and Cloakane Cowboy. Cloakane Cowboy. Uh, I'm just happy to be here, y'all. You know, um, happy to be here doing what I love to do the most, and that is to you know give you guys the word of the heavenly father and answer your questions to my best ability to shut down false doctrine so on and so forth that's what i was put on this earth to do and it's a very complete and content feeling knowing that you have found your calling all praises hey, you heard he, he, cowboy he, he, he coined it. <laughs> He coined it. You heard it here first. He coined it. Cocaine cowboy. <laughs> What's going on, my brother? Man, you know, just uh, in and out this Hanukkah strong with the La Familia, the Mosh oh, Pekata. Hey, I'm ending this Hanukkah out with uh that Trevante Tank Davis fight tonight. That's right. Tank is going. <laughs> Listen, we already know. It may be even so like, it ain't even no question what's getting ready to happen. We already know what that's going to go. I was just talking to you, Tom, about it. Look, so Teofimo Lopez, he loses last week, and they, they're all in the same division. Then Devin Haney, <laughs> Devin Haney fought last night. He didn't look that impressive. Uh, so Tank actually has a, a chance to outshine all his contemporaneouses. Shout out, Javante Tank. Fucking Davis, man. Right, man. So with that being said, let's hop straight into it. I know my brother, uh, he's out here flying around in the Atlanta streets in the which I need to be there. Lord willing. That's I'll right. Be, you know, hey, the water brother Marcus, how about you? Somebody said, what the F is a cocaine? Just, just we're, go on Clubhouse. That's when you'll figure it out. You're missing out <laughs> if you know what the cocaine cowboy is. You're missing out. But, uh, yeah, you guys see the title, man. You know, Vocab Malone. See, th the thing about Sakari is we know the art of war, man. We don't just go around starting wars on too many fronts. And, you know, you got to know how to how to connect political ties and things of that nature, you know, so that we don't have to be in so many confrontations and strife. But these silly-ass pseudo-apologists, pseudo they don't know when to keep their mouth shut. And so what does God do? He allows them to make statements like I'm about to show you guys so that we can then show you guys that is not the way. These guys are not the supposed new creatures who turn the other cheek. These guys are wicked, wicked as hell, right? So I'm going to let it play. I'm going to let and, – and then, look, Cloquane Cowboy, he's been prophesying this for months now. And not, not only Cloquane Cowboy, but – Sergeant Yatab as well. They both said it. Sam Shimon is on drugs. He needs help. What do you Christians do? We're not going to get our Christian brother help because he's struggling with drugs. Let's just continue getting on these blacks and show people how racist we are. We don't care about our own brother. Let's just get on the blacks, right? So without further ado, let me share my screen. We're going to play this. They'll have the chief weigh in on it. Let me see. Okay, here we go. My goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to rape that whore and then also sodomize you, you filthy dog, for threatening my daughters. Come see me face to face and threaten my daughters. I'll send you to where Muhammad is, who's in hell, and your mother is a whore of the Shia. Live with it, Khalid Habib, you stupid bastard. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Shia already put sugar on your mother, that whore, when they molested her in the name of your dog Allah and his dog Muhammad and did muta with her. They put a lot of sugar on her, a lot of sugar. Just ask the Ayatollah who had your mother on a leash before she gave birth to you. Glory to Jesus Christ, you filthy scum. If you're a man, come see me. Give me your location. Come. You threaten me, right? Self-defense when I send you to Allah and his messenger. You got another black Hebrew Israelite whore saying daughter of Zion. See, and, and you know what's called? Daughter of Zion is in the chat right now. When we went over there just to ask him some questions in your chat, 
He called this sister daughter of Zion a whore for no reason. Let's continue. Emily, what I think is a serious discussion is that you're a filthy prostitute of Satan. And that's Volcam Malone's elder and a part of his shield squad contemporary. So how you feel about that, Cloakane Cowboy, a.k.a. Uh, Gorilla Hebrew? Man, uh, you know, I'm the Cloakane Cowboy, but that man, he may very well be a cocaine cowboy. <laughs> I mean, God, and, and we've been saying this ever since earlier this year. He is clearly exhibiting traits and, and mannerisms and behavior that is consistent with somebody who is overcome in drug abuse, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all, we've been saying it. Y'all thought we was playing. We grew up around these type of people, okay? We didn't, I've been seeing drug addicts my whole life. I know one when I see one, and I saw one in Sam Shimon months ago. We was calling him on Skype, and the type of, of crazy stuff he would say out of his mouth and the way that his his mannerisms would be how he would be itching and shaking and looking. How he was just looking right there when he was saying that. Side of my, the way he was just looking. The man is on drugs. And y'all didn't care. You Christians do not care about your alleged brethren because you guys have done nothing collectively to call for this man to get help for his apparent drug addiction. He is clearly on drugs. And we were saying it. And yeah, we might have poked a little fun at it, but we we, we was not playing. We meant that he clearly was on drugs. We meant every word of that, right? Notice we didn't call all of y'all crackheads, did we? No, we only gave that to Sam because Sam's behavior is consistent with that, right? But they didn't care. Just like when Asian Cutie needed help, she was supposed to be their Christian sister, right? They didn't care. She had to come to the Israelites for help, right? These people do not. They only care like the great deacon just said, they only care about trying to attack black people and dictate to us how we can interpret the Bible, right? That's the only thing they care about. They care nothing, right? Nothing at all about the actual scriptures and what the scriptures say you're supposed to do to the people in which you're, you're in cahoots with, your fellow brethren, your fellow believers in helping them and being there for them. In charity, I thought love with that agape love is charity. Where is the charity in allowing this man to continue in drug abuse for months and doing nothing about it? Mm. There's no charity there. These Christians, they're full of it, man. They are really, really full of it. And we've been exposing it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh And we give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh for continually exposing these frauds and these pseudo apologists and i got a message for apologists we did some thugs with some scholarship god damn it <laughs> there we go i forgot about that bar <laughs> i forgot about that bar god. these scriptures man we gonna see i mean at the end of the day man you know it's it's so many things from from vocam alone saying black skin it's just talking about people being dirty and dirty black skin now you guys know more about like his wife situated, like sharing. Where was he sharing his wife with Jose, or what type of? Uh... All I know is his marital status is single, but he's somehow a stepfather. So I, I don't, I don't even know how that works because she's with Jose now. He's trying to follow the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. It seems <laughs> yeah, like that would, that would sound like a man. That's bad Lord business. Christ. From that to to K Dub and his. Him making a song talking about I'm black with a white Jewish wife and man, these shield squad apart. G man, G man, letting that fat white girl call call uh, say the word nigger, and then G con saying that you know police killing people ain't police killing black people ain't bad. I mean, just a bunch of coons over there at Vocab's plantation. Just, just the work, just the work, just the dregs of black people up over there. Mm -mm -mm. Horrible. Yeah, but uh, Dick, you got the rest of it. All praise to the most high. Salute to everybody in the chat. Make sure you like, sub, share, super chat, all that good stuff. These Christians, they been done, and just call them a throuber. Shalom. So, uh, <laughs> just the Tanya here. Yeah, about some stuff like a thigh. The water for the chief weighing in on this thing, man. All praises. All praises. I'm just pulling up some scriptures real quick. Let me pull up these scriptures.
And we about to get right into this roast session. We about to get right into this roast session. Right into this roast session. Okay, where we at? Let's go. Uh, all right. So, y'all ready, man? Let's play that one more time because we got to break that down. I'm going to break down everything he said just in case you guys didn't get it. I got to slow it down because he might have just dissed you. Now, let me give you guys some backdrop real quick. Joseph Fernandez, you're asking about different dates of the Feast of Dedication. That's because you're looking at different camps. Different camps are going to have different calendars. Why is that? Because people need to go into the Hebrew and, and need, need to visit Israel and, and, and get the correct date. But, you know, we're all rehears rehearsing the righteous acts, brother. So uh, let me let me play this so we could we could we could dub it down real quick. Hey, look, and if you're a Christian in here and if you want to defend, um, you know, Sam Shimon or Vocab Malone, you know, I'm always open for the smoke. Um, I am dealing with some health complications right now that are subsiding thanks to the most high God, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm not fenced to argue with you and get all loud with you, but we can have a cool, calm uh, dialogue today. You understand that? So let me break this down for y'all because I don't think you guys heard what the man really said. So let's go back here. Oh, I'm so glad I screen recorded this. So you guys need to learn how to screen record things, man. You need to learn how to screen record things. Get these receipts. Get the evidence before they delete it, man. You know, when I went on Sam Shamo's channel and I debated him and he took that video down, this is why every time I go to somebody's channel to debate them, I screen record it. And I can't, you can't download it because it has to process. And they could, they could, as soon as they end it, they could, they can delete it. So every time I go to somebody's channel, I got a screen recorded because they usually take it down, <laughs> you know, in the spirit and power you have by Shem Shai. But um, so, you know, we got a lot of brothers and sisters in the chat where um, <clears throat> we got a lot of brothers and sisters in the chat who came from the background of, you know, drugs, gangs, <clears throat> prostitution you know i know that might sound crazy but that is the oldest profession on the earth a lot of these women was prostituting whether they were doing it formally or informally but the point is we all have backgrounds uh of the streets so to speak right so we've all seen our family members on drugs bugging out and we've also seen and this is what i was telling alazar last night We've also seen, I've seen ministers, pastors, Christian pastors that are ill with the Bible. I mean, ill with the Bible, on crack, on dope, on powder. So that's the same with Shem Sam Shimon. I'm going to be real. He's ill with the Bible. He's ill with the Bible. You know, of course, he, he can't get one over on the Hebrew Israelites because we know the Bible better than they do. But he's ill with the scripts. I ain't even going front. <laughs> if you don't know how he's twisting them, you won't be able to see a, a organized lie is always going to defeat a disorganized truth. So when Hebrew Israelites go to his channel and don't know their stuff, he gets them out of there. I'll be real. Because a disorganized truth always get beat by an organized lie. <laughs> right? So... It's the same with Sam Shimon. He's ill with the Bible, but he is a racist. He talks shit about black people. And he is on some type of uncontrollable ass drug, just to be real. And this is who Volcab Malone uh, deems as his elder and a part of his group of apologists who come against black people. And that's why the Most High is slowly but surely dwindling, dwindling them and destroying their, their, um, their wicked counsel. And so we give all honor and glory to the Most High for that. 
So let, before we get into the Bible, <clears throat> before we open it up for questions, comments, and smoke, let's just break this down, what he's saying here. Now, this is fairly recent. Again, I believe he probably took this video down, but uh, I got it. I got it right here, exclusive. So I want to play this, and let's just break it down. So basically what happened was he was on a live stream, and he's always going at the Muslims. So allegedly a Muslim came in the chat and said something about his daughters. Maybe they said, your daughters are going to die or Allah is going to kill your daughters or something like that. I don't know what the man said specifically, but this was um, Sam Shimon's response to what he said. Now, people threaten us on a daily. Me and especially me and Alizar, they threaten us, our wives, our families, you know, and just to be fair, I'm going to put myself out there. The most I'll ever say is, OK, pull up, you know, pull up and, you know, a fool's uh, Proverbs 18 and six, a fool's lips call it for strokes. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll I'll call a nigga's bluff and tell him to just pull up to the camp or nigga, what city you in? Let's see if you, you keep that same energy, you know, but that's rare. Ain't nobody finna catch no flight to go have a goddamn one on one boxing match. But. You could get angry and, and carnal sometimes because we all fall short and you may make it. And I've made statements like that, but nothing to like, I'm going to kill you, send you to hell. Your mom, I'm going to pee on your mom and then you're going to get sodomized and your mom's going to get raped. We've never we've never gone off the handle like that. Just being real. Right. So let's uh, let's let's start this. My goal is to get your mother and piss on her. And so his goal is to get this Islam man's mother and piss on her. And this is Volcaz Malone's fruit. This is the fruit of Volcaz Malone. He wants to get the man's mom and pee on her. So now we're going to call him Sam Kelly. His name isn't Sam Shimon anymore. His name is Sam Kelly, half brother to R. Kelly. Right? Now he wants to piss on girls. Now, hold on a second. Which brings me to mind. Let's go to Dave Chappelle. Let's go to a clip here. <laughs> oh, man. This is for you, you you older people in the chat like me. See, these youngins, man, they wish they, wish they were old as us because it was, everything was funny. Everything was funnier, man. These niggas nowadays ain't funny. If you had to get rid of one comedian out of Chris Rock, Chris Tucker, Dave Chappelle, and Kevin Hart, who would it be? Get Kevin's fucking, excuse me. <laughs> get Kevin's monkey ass out of here. You you new generation, you guys are through. You guys have nothing but to come to the truth, and that's it. So let's hear this. Where's it at? This is when Dave Chappelle was doing a reenactment of R. Kelly, right? And we'll we'll be back to we'll be back to Sam Kelly in just a second. But let's go to uh Dave Kelly. See rolling around, sitting on doves, can't buy hours, high on shrubs, cooling in my escalade. Man, I'm paid, I got it made. Take me to your special place. Close your eyes, show me your face. I'm gonna piss on it. <laughs> oh, so the, Jeremiah, you need a helmet for that go kart. You need a helmet for that go kart. I don't trust you. Unless you're being supervised and monitored. Anyway, this dude said, close your eyes, show me your face. I'm going to piss on it. And this is what we have here with Volcan Malone's elder, Sam Shimon. Sam Shimon. You understand that? It's real, y'all. Sam Kelly. Khaled Habib, my goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to rape that whore and then get the Shia. Those are the Muslims in Saudi Arabia that will really that be really like doing destruction over there. They be bringing pressure. If you're not following Islamic code, they bring in pressure, real pressure. So he wants 
the Shia, the the Islamic militia to rape this guy's mom. To rape that whore and then also sodomize you. And he wants the Shia to sodomize him. You guys understand that? Look at how many capital punishments is that? Rape, sodomize, murder. Is this all you want to, this is what you want to do? Just inflict all this capital punishment. All a multiplicity of capital punishments that you want to give to this guy's family because he's probably somewhere in Saudi Arabia in your chat talking and saying something about your daughters. You're never going to see this guy. And you know it. And we can tell by the look on your face, you're coming down. Your high is coming down. And so you're irritated, you're frustrated, you're getting enraged because you're having withdrawals and your high is coming down. You can see it in your eyes. I'm just saying, this ain't even a joke. My mom was on drugs, my dad was on drugs, my uncles was on drugs. You know, I I sold drugs. I know drugs. And I know druggies. I know crack. We cooked it. We cooked it many a times. Turn one and a two, two and a three, three and a four. So we know crack and we know crackheads. Again, he's going on live on his channel every day. Let's take you guys to his channel. And he's bringing it out, the false doctrine, right? But he's still, oh, he's live right now. Look at a Muhammad, a Muhammadan blasphemes and the woman of Revelation 12, a biblical exegesis. He's live right now. And Mary, because Mary is truly that woman. Who gave birth to the male child. It's all of the above. And he's got uh, 50,000 subscribers, but he's on blow. He's on blow. He's on brown. Something. Crystal shards. You see what I'm saying? But then he's saying Revelation 12, the woman is Mary. You see that? But if an Israelite goes on there and you don't know how to break that down, he's going to catch you out there. But clearly the man's on clam chowder. Let's keep going. You filthy dog for threatening my daughter. That whore. And then also sodomize you, you filthy dog for threatening my daughters. So you want Leviticus 20 and 13 to happen. You want these guys to lay with this man. <laughs> That's your goal is to get. Let's just rewind it, y'all. This is Volcan Malone's elder. Let's just rewind it. He said these are his goals. My goal is to get your mother and piss on her. So one goal is to piss on this man's mom. What if she has a husband? That's the spirit of adultery. Get the Shia to rape that. Then you want her raped. That's violation of the Mosaic law. Or, and then also sodomize you. And your goal is to get them to sodomize. So you guys see where the drug, you guys see how much drugs are involved here imagine the Shia, which are extreme Muslims, listening to some Catholic Orthodox Christian trying to say, hey, go rape and kill and, and sodomize this guy. The Shia is going to listen to you. You're on dope. Let's keep going. Let's hear some more of his goals. Filthy dog for threatening. Right. He's straight profane. My daughters. Come see me face to face and threaten my daughters. I'll send you to where Muhammad is, who's... So he wants to kill. You threaten his daughters, he's going to kill you. <laughs> man, niggas talk so tough on the internet, man. I just don't even understand it. Niggas talk so tough on the internet. I'm sure he's never killed nothing, ain't, ned, ain't letting nothing die. Ain't killed nothing, ain't letting nothing die. Niggas is so quick to kill and fight on the internet. That's crazy. Hell. And your mother is a whore of this. And his mother's a whore, right? Look at this. Yeah, live with it, Khalid Habib, you stupid bastard. And he's a stupid bastard. This is Volcan Malone's elder. Volcan Malone's elder, man. This is crazy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And after that, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's rape her. Let's pee on her. Let's sodomize him. Let's kill them and send them to hell. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So Jesus is all about peeing on people's moms, sodomizing men, 
and men sodomizing men, which is homosexuality and rape. So Jesus, that's what Jesus is about, huh? Well, well, to be honest with you guys, yes, Jesus is about that. The white, blue eyed, blonde Jesus, he is about that. He's a faggot. That's Caesar Bogier from the 14th century. So he's right about that. His Jesus is down with that. His Jesus did that and does that. So, but the Bible doesn't agree with that. His white Jesus is okay with that, but the Bible does not agree with that. Does she already put sugar on your mother? That so he's saying the Shia already put sugar on your mother. That's an Islamic custom or euthanism or where they they defy how how they defile women over there. They put sugar on your mother. I don't know if they do it before, during, or after they defile her. Or when they molested her. And they so now this guy's mom was molested by the Shia, right? <laughs> this dude is crazy, man. See, look, man, I'm going to be real. The most foul, vow, the most foul, vow, unbridled, rough around the edges, camp that we have in the Israelite community is is a uh, GMS Great Millstone. But I don't even think they talk like this. I've heard them say stuff like they're going to get 9 and 12 year olds in the kingdom of heaven and that rape is lawful. Well, there was there is a GMS member a long time ago who said God this is GMS Arizona. He said God uh, that Alazar's family is going to be brutal. His, his wife and kids are going to be brutally raped and murdered. So there is there is one camp that may be able to match up with this. But by and large, Israelites don't talk like this. Israelites do not talk like this. They didn't give glory to Jesus, right? So let's see. Let's keep going. When they molested her in the name of your dog Allah and his dog Muhammad and did in the name of your, I thought the Bible says, if it be so, be at peace with all men. <clears throat> How are you letting your light shine amongst the, is, the world of Islam to try to convert them to a white supremacist religion called Christianity if you're speaking like this? Hmm? How, Sway? That dog Muhammad and, his, and that dog Allah. Boy, you better hope them. You better hope that you better hope that they don't find you. You better hope. When they molested her in the name of your dog Allah and his dog Muhammad and did muta with her, they put a lot of sugar on and did muta with her. The word muta in Islam is dealing with pleasure, so sex or sexual things. So he's saying that they took the Shia, took sugar, took his mom, molested her, raped her, did muta with her. A lot of sugar. Just ask the Ayatollah who had your mother on a leash before she gave birth to you. Just ask the Ayatollah, who was like an Islamic regime, uh, who had his mom on a leash before <laughs> she gave birth to this individual in his chat. Glory to Jesus Christ. You filthy. Glory to Jesus Christ. Wow. Come. If you're a man, come see me. Give me your location. Come. You threaten me, right? Self-defense. He said, if you're a man, this is what this is what I mean by powder, drugs. He said, if you're a man, come see me. Give me your location. No, 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 no. You told him to come see you, so you drop your location. You're scared. You're not going to drop. How is he going to come see you and you asking him for his location? That means you're going to see him. It's all a joke, man. This is an act. It's just him coming down off of whatever drug that he can't get right now. Maybe the dope man is asleep. Who knows? When I send you to Allah and his messenger. Here you got another black Hebrew Israelite whore. And he loves calling the black Hebrew Israelite women or Hebrew Israelite women in general whores, right? This is Vocab's elder. Same daughter of Zion. Emily, what I think is a serious discussion is that you're a filthy prostitute of Satan. So now is she, this woman is a filthy prostitute of Satan. Look at this. One racist, one drug addict racist, and a token nigga. Man. Mm -mm. It's always some token nigga. 
There's <laughs> always some talking nigga with a hat, with a hat that says Jesus. <laughs> and I guarantee you that's a curve bill hat. Look at a goddamn Velcro strap. Velcro strap on a curve bill hat. Just like a token Negro. Right? But that's what it is, y'all. That's what it is, man. You see them, they go out together. They go run up on people's camps together. These two, Vocab Malone and Sam Shimon, his elder. They go run up on people's camps, talking crazy, interrupting it, which is so disrespectful and blasphemous. And now here they are right here, hugged up, happy about their work that they do. Their so-called work, Satan's work. And who wears a Kango with glasses? You don't wear you don't wear a hat with glasses. You don't wear a hair wear on hair wear. Clown. So let's just look at something real quick, <clears throat> right? So he's live right now, whatever. But let's just read a couple of scriptures and see how this all fares. Let's read a couple of scriptures and see. Right. Uh, Second Corinthians five and 17. Right. Agents, straight up agents, man. Second Corinthians five and 17. Right. We're going to read a, a, a few different translations. <clears throat> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, which he says he's in Christ, right? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. This is not becoming of a new creation. It's just not. Talit Habib, my goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to rape that whore and then also sodomize you. That's not becoming of a new creature. Let's just be real. The, now, you may have been a sodomizer and a rapist before the truth. You, Sam Kelly, since you want to piss on people, Sam Kelly. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The new has come. So this isn't exemplifying or displaying you being a new creature, entrenched, enveloped, engulfed in the word of God. Anybody, does everybody agree? Put a one in the chat if you agree. If this is justifiable, then put a two in the chat. Put a one in the chat if you agree. Look at this, bro. Look at look at his face, man. Just droopy, face falling off, face falling to the ground. Somebody give me a Christian rehabilitation. Get to the Christian Rehabilitation Center. But in the but as we've always said, Jesus is crack. What do I mean by that? Not the biblical Jesus, but the Jesus in the minds of Christians. He's crack. It's, Christianity is worse than crack, which is why we always say we rather our people be on crack than in Christianity, because you can get off of crack. My mom did it, my friends did it, my family members did it, my people I know did it. But putting down that white supremacist religion known as Christianity, man, that's harder to get off than heroin. That's a gorilla on your back. That is a gorilla on your back. Filthy dog for. Okay, so let's go back here. And so he's clearly now watch this, y'all. So again, because I know vocab is probably going to do a response video. So I want to make sure I keep it real. And yeah, a lot of times I'm just joking around like Vocab Malone be sharing this video that I did when I was at Dave and Buster's and I was quoting a Tupac song when Tupac was like, Chino exhale, F you too. Biggie, Puffy, F you too. All y'all, F you too. My, die slow, my fofo, make sure all y'all kids don't grow. That is a Tupac quote that I was at Dave and Buster's and I inserted G-Con's name, Volcav's name, while I was laughing, smiling, and joking. This dude is dead serious. Nevertheless, 
I never said I was going to kill anybody or um, sodomize anybody, piss on anybody's mother or rape anybody. So that would be a false equivalent. But like I said, just being fair, I have been agitated and frustrated with certain individuals who are making threats in the comment board. And I said, pull up because you could catch a friendly fade. That's the most I ever said was pull up to catch a friendly fade. And that's a rarity because I always stay in character for the most part. Uh, but I'm just being real. It's hard to stay in the spirit all the time when you have so many scoffers and scorners. That's why you have to make sure you're um, eating the whole roll, increasing your faith, hearing the word, watching other, watching your brothers teach, getting edified by them, having the Holy Spirit coming to sup with you so that you can stay locked in, grounded in the spirit. Just being real, right? Now, in this case, it's just horrible. I'm going to send you to hell, murder. I'm going to pee on your mother, defiling. I'm good. She's going to get raped. You're going to get sodomized. You know what I mean? This is ridiculous. And it's unbecoming of a so-called elder who's a part of Vocab Malone's group, right? So let's continue. Proverbs. 20 and 22 proverbs 20 and 22 right look what this says say not thou say uh the water king judah yeah how about you thought brother for the super chat donation say not thou i will recompense evil so that's what he wants to do he wants to recompense evil now there is precedence though if i'm going to be balanced here because we never want to show respect to persons or have a false balance. That's wicked. What he could have said, which most Christians still wouldn't do, but what he could have said was, you know, you're talking shit about my daughters on a live chat. You know, he could have just ignored it because this Islamic dude is probably in the Middle East somewhere <laughs> on your live chat. I mean, you're never going to see this guy. Or you could have said, you know, I wish I could see you. You could say it to my face and you know, we could we could do a one on one fisticuffs. That's Proverbs 18 and six. That's justifiable. But the whole I'm going to murder you and then I'm going to I'm gonna pee on your mom, rape, sodomize. That's just taking it way too far. Now you're you're more guilty than the the the, the empty threats that he made via chat. You are more guilty than he is. If, if, if God was to judge you both, him saying, threatening your daughters and you saying, I'm going to pee on your mother. She's going to get raped. You're going to get sodomized. I'm going to send you to hell. Meaning I'm going to murder you. What is the weight of your matter? Who, what is the heavier transgression? You. So now you're in his same boat as, of, of judgment. <clears throat> right. So let's go here. So he wants to recompense evil in which Christ taught us to show mercy. Show mercy. Like I said, even if you exercise Proverbs 18 and 6, a fool's mouth call it for strokes, you don't have to do that. That should be the last thing you do. And you, you could turn the other cheek, meaning not let somebody hit you and turn the other cheek. That's not what that means. Turning of the cheek is showing mercy in situations where mercy needs to be given, where there's an option for mercy, such as if a brother steals from you, you know, you have the the option or Yahweh Shai is teaching who the world ignorantly calls Christ. His teachings is to show mercy. You know, just let them have it, man. Of course, if it ain't like <laughs> a big loss, you know what I mean? It even is. Some brothers may show mercy on a big loss. You know, like a little loss, a brother takes, you know, your goddamn uh, Bluetooth speaker or something like that, you know. Let him have it, man. Just cut cut the brother off. Let him have it. Cut him off. You don't have to exercise Proverbs 18 and 6. The whole point is our Lord came to show, uh, to teach us how to show mercy and be merciful to one another to bring us back to the Mosaic law. 
because the Mosaic law taught to send mercy, uh, to express mercy to one another. When he said, if you see your enemy's ox, that's Exodus 23, I believe. When you see your enemy's ox, return your enemy's ox, even though he be your enemy. So Christ is teaching us to show mercy towards each other, bringing us back to the law where the law taught us to show mercy towards each other. Right. So now when the day of judgment comes, then we recompense evil because the Bible says that the Israelites are going to take hold of all these nations who had us in captivity and we're going to show our vengeance. We're going to recompense evil on them. But before the day of judgment, we are supposed to be compassionate and merciful to each other. Right. That's why it says uh, Proverbs 20 and uh, 22. <clears throat> It says, say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. So what does Sam Shimon want to do? Sam Shimon wants to recompense evil. He wants his mom, pee, he wants to pee on the man's mom, have her raped and have him sodomized and then send them to hell. <laughs> He's worse than the devil. <laughs> That man is worse than the devil, right? This is Proverbs 24 and 29. Proverbs 24 and 29. Right? And look what it says. We're going to read a couple of different translations. Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. This is a cut, man. This is a cut. Like I said, before we try to before we try to get the exercise in Proverbs 18 and 6, when we feel like we want to lay hands on somebody, we know Nehemiah slapped the shit out of a couple of Israelites and snatched a patch of hair out their jaws. But we are in the time of grace. Why? Because we all need grace. When we commit sin or when we when we do something, we can't go atone for it properly. When we go out to eat, we can't make sure they're not cooking that steak next to pork. Our defiled bread. When we go to work, we, we don't know if um, the person we're working, the, 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 the lady we're working with is on her period causing you to be unclean because whatever she sits on, you sitting on, now you're unclean. So at this point of humanity, or for Israel, Israel for that matter, we need grace, so we have to show grace. <clears throat> so when you read Proverbs 24 and 29, it says, Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will pay the man back for what he has done. The Bible said, don't do that. And anyway, if we had our own land and autonomy and sovereignty, We'd be able to go to the judges, chief priests, and rulers and have that judicial system. In this point, in this time, under grace, because we, we're in exile, we have to exemplify more mercy and more grace towards one another. The Christian church, the Christian church tries to act like they teach that, but clearly they want to piss on people. Sam Kelly. My goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to rape that whore and then also sodomize you, you filthy dog, for threatening my daughters. Come see me face to face and threaten my daughters. I'll send you to where Muhammad is, who's in hell, and your mother is a whore of the Shia. Live with it, Khalid Habib, you stupid bastard. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Shia already put sugar on your mother, that whore, when they molested her in the name of your dog Allah and his dog Muhammad and did muta with her. They put a lot of sugar on her. A lot of sugar. Just ask the Ayatollah who had your mother on a leash before she gave birth to you. Glory to Jesus Christ. <laughs> you filthy scum. If you're a man, come see me. Give me your location. Come. You threaten me, right? Self-defense when I send you to Allah and his messenger. You got another black Hebrew Israelite torque saying daughter of Zion. Emily, what I think is a serious discussion is that you're a filthy prostitute of Satan. See that? Incredible. Incredible. Our, our women are prostitutes and whores. Islamic women are prostitutes and whores. <clears throat> Anybody who's me of melanated 
color is a prostitute and whore, according to Sam Sam Kelly. He wouldn't bust a grape in Welch's. He wouldn't bust a grape in Welch's backyard. Uh, King Prodigy, the Water Brother for the super chat donation, made the Most High bless you a hundredfold. We are all dealing with financial um, disparities because we're in our captivity and subjugation. So may the Most High bless you in our affliction and increase you financially as you are pursuing his will diligently because he's not going to bless the wicked. Satan blesses the wicked. <clears throat> so anyway, let's continue. Let's continue, y'all. Matthew. Uh, look at this. Look at the Beatitudes. Let's deal with the Beatitudes. Uh, what clip, Hassan? Hassan, uh, what clip are you talking about? What what clip is Hassan talking about? So we got Matthew five and uh, thirty eight. Is there? A, this is red letter. Let's see if Sam Shimon follows red letter. The Water Brothers F and I. How about Sam Shimon? Thought for your continuous generosity. I'm trying to figure out what clip Hassad is talking about. Matthew 5 and 38. Let's see if these Christians adhere to the words of Christ. <laughs> they say the law is done away with, and all you got to keep is the law of Christ. But these fake ass Christians don't even do that. Matthew 5 and 38. You have heard that it had been said, an eye for an eye and a two for a two. So, yes, in the Mosaic law, well, you just sent it. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, oh, excuse me. People being dirty, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> people being dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is so funny. Let me send this to my, my phone because me and Alazar talked about this earlier. <clears throat> Let me send this to my my photos real quick. So we can play this. All right, let's see. How do I get out of here? Let's go back. Okay, here we go. All right, you guys want to see how Volcan Malone, this is all, this is so bad. Volcan Malone needs to retire, man, because see how Volcan Malone this is so bad, bro. Like, give it up already. We know all you guys are Nazis. Even who they call faithful to God on YouTube, also known as Mike Perea, he hates his own kind. But come on, y'all. We gotta really, really understand something here. Look at look at this. How does Volcam alone feel about you black people? People being dirty, you know what I'm saying? Black skin, like people being dirty, you know what I'm saying? Black skin, like people being dirty, you know what I'm saying? Black skin, like People being dirty, you know what I'm saying? So when he says, when the Bible says the Israelites are black, when he uses that Hebrew word, he says it's talking about basically white people being dirty. And you guys expect me not to use so-called foul language and so-called swear words when talking about these guys, but they get to say that. You see how unfair it is? This is, this is such a racist system that white people can gun us down every 28 hours for no reason go and do mass shootings and walk out and get burger king afterwards but when we say something about it we're the mad angry black people but he gets to say this shit. we're not we're not this is why people are leaving the black christian church we're not doing it we're not them guys we are not one of them. Black skin means people. When we read that when the Bible it says in their skin was black, it means their skin is dirty. White people have white Jews with dirty skin is what he's saying. <laughs> Crazy. You guys are through. Baha Shema Mashiach Yahushai. And you're not going to stop this truth. We don't die, we multiply, right? Now let's continue though. 
Matthew 5 and 39. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. I mean, and don't succumb to evil temptation. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. I explain this. This doesn't mean um, when somebody hits you, you turn a cheek and, and let them hit you on the other cheek. This is just figuratively speaking about showing mercy when somebody wrongs you. He goes into it. And if any man will sue thee at the law, take away thy coat and let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asked thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. You have heard that it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Right? Which that's nowhere in the law. That was a, a tradition of the Pharisees that they tried to add and make a stipulation. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Sam's not doing this. They allegedly curse his daughters, allegedly, and now he wants to pee on them and rape them and sodomize them. My goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to rape that whore and then also sodomize you, you filthy dog. For Now, listen, am I listening to this wrong? Is he saying that he wants to sodomize the guy or he wants the Shia to sodomize him? Now, if there's a comma in between what he's saying or a colon mark, he might be talking about going into this. Speaking of colons, right? <laughs> if there's a colon mark, he might be speaking of some even more debaucherous and sinister. Talit Habib, my goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to rape that whore and then also sodomize you, you filthy dog. So I don't know if his goal is to pee on his mother, and then his goal is to get the Shia to rape his mother, and then his goal is to sodomize this man, or if his goal is to get the Shia to sodomize him. Either way, it's gay. All I can tell you is he's gay. Gay, gay, gay. But in all seriousness, that's not loving your enemies, blessing them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. That you may be the children of your father which you're not of the father. For one, you're a, Syri a Syrian. You're an Assyrian, allegedly, right? You're an Assyrian. The Assyrians had the northern kingdom in captivity. And the Bible said that we was going to take everybody who had us into captivity. So guess what the Assyrians got coming? Oh, you got it. That's prophecy. So you're not of the father and you were never of the father. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Meaning he's control in ev uh, of everything, right? For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans do the same? Do not even the publicans the same? Let me give you guys a story real quick, right? Back in the day. Um, well, I'm not even going to give that story. But the point is, is that we have to learn how to really live by the words of the Messiah, the words of this book. We have to learn that. He said, this is how you know that you're a children of the father. We are children of the father. So if you're not doing this, you are not a children of the father, a child of the father. You're not a child of God. People say everybody's a child of God. Everybody's a child. Every, excuse me. Everybody is not, every human being is not a child of God. He said that, Christ just said that the only way you're a child of God is if you're doing what He's listening in these Beatitudes. Look at this in John 8, right? Let's go to John 8. John 8, 47, I believe, right? Let's see. Watch this. I think it's 47. 
John 8 and 47. Let's go to Bible Hub, right? Watch this, y'all. Now, let's say we're teaching the word of God and, and nobody wants to, somebody walks by and doesn't want to listen and say, you guys are crazy. I don't believe in that shit. Now, look at John 48 and 47. Whoever belongs to God, here's what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. So everybody's not a child of God. Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God. But you do not listen because you do not belong to God. Whoever is of God, hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Look at King James. He that is of God, heareth God's words. Yea, ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. So everybody's not a child of God. And this decrepit Assyrian right here who's on blow, powder, and brown is definitely not a child of God. And this devil talking about black people are dirty. Black skin is talking about people being dirty. He's definitely not a child of God. Vocab alone. People being dirty, you know what I'm saying? Black skin, like people being dirty, you know what I'm saying? Black skin, like. You see? So when we go to Luke chapter six, Luke chapter six. He says, verse 27, but I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you, pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the cheek, offer also the other. And to him that taketh away the cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Right? Well, this is just him speaking. And you, and as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. That's very key. For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those that love them. It's very hard for us to exemplify this, but I've had to do it. We have so many death threats, so many death threats, so many scoffers and scorners, so many people wishing death on us. It would exhaust me of all energy of all electrolytes and minerals in my body, if I entertain that and, and made that knock me off my square, you have to learn how to live by this. And clearly these Christians do not. You understand that? They do not. My goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to- He wants to piss and rape and sodomize, right? So look what it says. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. Right? I'm going to tell you guys a story because I wasn't going to tell you guys. But so I did something to, to this brother. He wasn't in the truth. And I was just coming into the truth. So I was still rough around the edges. And I, I offended him greatly, right? And years later, I, I just seen him. And uh, I went up to him and I tried to apologize because I offended him and um, I wanted to just apologize to him. And again, he wasn't in the truth. Um, so I seen him and I tried to apologize to him and <laughs> dude straight up said, I don't F with you. I don't mess with you. I don't want to shake your hand. And he, he just basically went off on me. And I had to sit there, even though I'm just being real, I could clearly whoop this guy's ass. I'm just being real. There's just some people who you can size up and you know it's going to be, it's going to, you're going straight to their Chinsylvania and they're going to be down for the count. But you know, I had to sit there and I had to let him roast me because I was in the wrong. You know what I mean? But 
I was happy that, you know, I had grew and I had matured and I tried to right my wrongs. I tried to do good. And even after that, you know, I would still, although he roasted me, I would, I will still try to do good to him because I know he probably wants to do something to me. You know, I still will want to, to, to do good to him. You know, it's hard. It was hard. I think I called Hassan Alizar and Yatab after that happened. <laughs> but that was hard. So it's hard, y'all. It's hard to fight the flesh, but it's possible and doable. And I, I was able to do it in that time. You know, so there's no excuse. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ Jesus. It says, be perfect. Oh, what's that? Matthew 5 and 48. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 48. He's not going to set us up for failure and say that we can do something that we can't. Right? Matthew 5 and 48. Matthew 5 and 48. It says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which in which is in heaven, is perfect. Right. So we can do it, y'all. There ain't no excuses, man. There ain't no excuses. We can do it. Only Christians have excuses. Oh, I can't. I can't. The, the, the pastor going to tell you every Sunday, you can get that car. You can get that car. Who's uh? who's this dude la latching, lacking? We Muslims follow Jesus more than Christians. Oh, really? Well, let's get him the link real quick. Let's get him the link real quick. This might have been the biggest mistake that he's made this week. He said we follow Jesus more than Christians. So let's get let's get him on here. We got a fresh link in the chat. And for anybody who wants some smoke, but again, remember, y'all, I'm going through some health complications, so take it easy on me. <sighs> and pray for pray for leadership, not even just leadership. Pray for the brothers who are who are just doing the work that we can continue to to teach and and, and spread the gospel to wake our people up, so we can get the hell out of here. Mm. I love talking to Muslims. I wish I could talk to Muslims more, but it seems like, you know, Muslims have more of a problem with white Christians. Because I go over to David Wood's channel. David Wood is debating a lot of uh, Muslims. I go over to Sam Shimon. He's debating a lot of Muslims, which is fine because I know they don't like white people, which we don't either. That's what we do have in common. But we would like to talk to our Arabic Islamic brothers about theology as well. Um, what's going on, brother? Mic check, hey, mic shalom. check. Yo, shalom, shalom. What's going on? Yeah, um, I kind of came in late. I kind of I came into the show late, but um, obviously I know the the two people that you're you're discussing about. But um, I, I have a, a question that's you know, separate from the subject, and I wanted some help mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's Mark chapter 2, 21 and 22, where it talks about um, if one, you know, when Jesus told them, if one, um, if one cuts, uh, uh, puts a new piece of cloth, sew a new piece of cloth onto old cloth, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, it, it's, it's going to tear. I don't remember, I don't have the scripture in front of me. But it's Mark 2, 21 and verse 22. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. What's your question on it? Did you just want me to explain it for you? No, well, well, what it is, what it is, I kind of have an idea. But I've noticed most people, most people who are New Testament only try to say, well, look, this is saying that um, if you put new wine in old bottles, it'll crack. So that means you can't mix the Old Testament with the New Testament. Or no. if you put if you put a new piece of cloth along with the old cloth, 
that's saying that you can't mix the old the new covenant with the old covenant or the new testament with the old testament. How do you yeah. I didn't I didn't how do you really break it that down? Well, if that's the case, like I tell every like I told everybody before, if you were to take a black sharpie and you were to cross out every time the old testament is mentioned in the new testament, there would be no new testament. So from Christ to all the apostles and disciples, they taught out of the Old Testament. So you would have to accuse Paul, <laughs> Christ himself, and the other disciples and apostles of, of, of violating Mark 2 and 21, if, if that's what it means. That's ridiculous. So what, what would you say is the proper breakdown of what Christ is talking in that, in that parable? That's just talking about... Um, you know, you have to you have to start again. Christ said you have to be as a child. You have to forget everything you've learned, all that old doctrine, all that old indoctrination. You have to forget that so that you can learn the truth again. You have to be you have to undo and redo. That's all he's saying. Don't try to mix um, this this new wine with old wine like you have to come back as a child. Remember in Peter, it says, uh, Isaiah 28 also says, he that is weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. That means you have to come back into this faith like a baby to understand it because you've been indoctrinated for too long. Even Peter said, uh, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word. And then Christ said, you see this child, you got to be like this child. If you want to get into the kingdom of heaven, you got to unlearn and be retaught. So that's what he's saying about the sewing the new patches on the old patches and uh, putting um, new wine in old bottles. You got to be retaught to get the truth. And that's dealing with us in these times because we had to re be retaught the most being indoctrinated with Christianity. But even back then, during Christ's time, we were indoctrinated with false doctrines and also the tradition of the Pharisees. Yeah, well, some of the complications with that is is that um, yes, we have to be retort, right? But it seems like um, when we when we relearn, because not everything that Christianity teaches is wrong. You would agree with mm -hmm. me on that, right? Right. Yeah, not everything they teach is wrong. So yes, on I would say let's say at least seventy five percent of what they teach needs to be to be re you know renewed, but there still are some things, so it's kind of like just a transition is what it is, right? What do you mean? Meaning that um, you have to, everything is still there, but just you have to be retaught on everything, even though some things that was there before is true. No, I say you have to treat Christianity like men in black you seen the men in black movie when they yeah. had to zap your ass and make you forget everything that's right. how we need to treat christianity you need to be zapped your mind needs to be zapped your mind right. needs to be excavated from everything it learned from christianity all your right. faculties needs to be depleted of christianity then learn again okay all right i, I got it i got it I just wanted to go a little more, you know, when I'm on the phone with you, I just like to stay, just, just squeeze you a little more to see as much as I can get. Yeah, it's all good, brother. <laughs> Yo, I appreciate Deke, man, every time, man. I'm, I'm going I'm to come out and just listen. All right, brother. I'm going to get the next brother on. Shalom, Lord. Okay. Yai Yai Quav. Hey, what's up? What's up, King? What's going on, brother? Man, chilly, chill, man. Well, man, ain't ain't coming to get no smoke, man. Just pretty much want to um put a little buzz out there in the uh, Hebrew Israelite communities. Something that uh, because I know that you guys <clears throat> debate the Christian the Christians a lot, and I ain't gonna lie, man. I can't wait till I get my day. You know what I'm saying? Because um I think I'm ready for them also. Well, I know I'm ready for them, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to share something with you, Deacon, about this Paul character, right? So mm -hmm. I have I have the original um some of the original um, epistles of James, I found. So I'm gonna I'm read, James, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read it to you. I wanna let you, I'm, I'm gonna let you determine. You're gonna like this, all right? 
Now, remember, now it tells you it tells you in the scripture about Paul's having a, a vision, right? Mm -hmm. OK, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Here it is. It says scroll three, the troubles with Paul of Tarsus. It says, so Saul, when he heard of the miracles, was exceedingly afraid and came to mind that perhaps our community might be process processors of the truth after all. Talking about James and the elders of, uh, of Jerusalem. Then it says, then he departed on the road to Damascus. Watch this, deacon. And he was immediately struck from, from his animal by God's might. This time Saul was terrified almost to death, believing that this was some potent, that the mission upon which he was embarked was indeed a opposition to God's will. And that if he proceeded, he would meet a greater or even fatal accident. So Paul got hit in the face by, by his animal. OK, so he like, damn, wow, this might be uh, I'm, I'm, I sh maybe I shouldn't go on this mission to go and uh, carry on with, you know, killing the prophets and the saints, you know, because this happened to me. Watch this. He says, so from that day, he pledged that he would no longer harm those who followed the way. OK, James, the bishop and the elders of Jerusalem, but that he would leave us alone if the almighty would but spare him. However, this put him at odds with his own men. Makes sense. And in, in, in direct opposition to the will of the high priest who had sent him on this commission. So he claimed a vision, here it is, and a voice saying that he had been made blind by this vision. He dared not to return to Jerusalem and thereby face the wrath of the high priest. So thereupon he asked his men to take him directly to Damascus. There he knew a healer who could cure him. After he gained recovery from his blindness, he rested some days at the house of the healer of Gnostic Nazarene, whom he, whom, whom he uh, named Hananias. This Ananias immersed him in the name of Jehochanan, the immerser of repentance, and taught him, and it says, and taught him the pagan teachings that the spirit is pure, but the flesh is evil. Armed thus with this newfound belief, he began preaching nonsense in synagogues of Damascus, so that he was chased from the city, heaping curses upon the Jewish citizens of the city by, re by rejecting his teachings. He departed at once to the small towns of Nebuchadnezzar, where he spent three years hounding the Arabs with regard to the strange visions and ascetic teachings. OK, this is why you see uh, people like King Aretas, who was an Ar Arabian king, uh, wanting to kill Paul. This is why a lot of people don't understand why Arabs like to kill uh, Christians, because since 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 that time of the era, they've been killing so-called Pauline Christians because of the, of the doctrines that Paul was teaching. Listen to this. After that time, he and also people who don't know that King Aretas and then was also at that time uh, at war because what they did to John the Baptist. Do your research. Let's keep reading. It says after that time, he returned to Damascus, where he again pastured the citizens of the city. So offensive did he became that the citizens petitioned the governor to deal with him. The governor attempted to have him arrested, but with the help of his friend, Hananiah, Saul managed to escape. Therefore, he went up to Jerusalem, Galatians 1 and 18 through 19, but the only but only to visit Simon Kepha and stayed with him 15 days. Uh, OK, during that time, he formed a lasting and faithful friendship with him. He did not see any of the mysteries, but he did meet our Yaakov, Galatians 1 and 19. In that meeting, he lied with regard to his motives, seeking to make excuses for what he had done to Yaakov without any form of apologies. But Yaakov, being a man of great mercy and a man who saw been lifted up by God's loving kindness, forgave anyway for the blows that he had, but he had rained down upon him in the temple. That's Acts 26 and 10 when he said he was crucifying the saint. That's what he's talking about, what he had did to Yaakov and the bishops and uh, bish, uh, elders of Jerusalem and all them. It says, however, Saul threatened to arouse the same uproar in Jerusalem he had done in Damascus and, and around Nebuchadnezzar, especially amongst the Hellenistic followers whom he had previously pro uh, persecuted. So the brethren took him to Caesarea, whereupon he had put on the ship back to his home city of Tarsus in the native land of Sicilia. I'm almost done. It says, after that, Saul did not return to Jerusalem for another 10 years. He argued insensibly with the pagans of Sicilia, claiming that the resurrected Savior uh, he taught was greater than all the resurrected saviors believed in, uh, they believed and put together. So understand that the reason why that Paul is the person that came up with this resurrected uh, Jesus Christ, supernatural Jesus Christ, because of the, of the Greco-Roman beliefs of, of, of what they believe over there. You know what I'm saying? And it says, thereby they honed his teachings and perfected his beliefs. After four years, a convert of Sapri, a birth named Barnabas, went looking for him in Tarsus. Upon locating him, he, sought, he, be, he brought Saul back with him to uh, Antioch in Syria, where he's uh, serving with the community of Greek, followers of God-fearers. Uh, I'm sorry, it was during that time 
when he reverted to the Gentile name of his birth, Paul. The community there had been swelled by Greek followers from Cyprus who were most fervent and the mistaken belief that Yahshua had been that promised Messiah to the Jewish people. In Antioch, under Paul's over influence, the community came to believe that Yahshua as the Christ that is as the Messiah died to save us all from our sin. Since according to the common Jewish belief, the promised Messiah was not supposed to get killed, Paul had to invent a way to explain and justify his death. He resolved the conundrum by falling back on the tales of the dying and resurrected gods of his youth. It was because of this strident belief that Greek followers became known as Christiani, that is, Messianis. His rigid and unco uncompromising teaching prevailed in that city, and he remained there until Kepha was made head of the community in Antioch. After that, Paul left, uh, left with Barnabas to spread the new teaching of Christiani, which gave him a new standing and purpose. They traveled first to Sicilia, then Cyprus, uh, Pelophamilia and Sidia, where he was expelled from the synagogue in Antioch for teaching the Jewish people uh, there to abandon Torah, which is Acts chapter 13, 43 through 52. So again, Christians don't even understand that their whole doctrine is built off a dream, you know what I'm saying? And and and, and Paul's and Paul's belief of his upbringing being uh coming up as a so-called what you call a Greco-Roman belief of these resurrected gods and all these people. But the early Christian church, which was first century, never taught of a resurrected Jesus Christ. This is all second century and above beliefs, you know what I'm saying? And like I say, Gene, I just want to drop it off, drop that off on you, man, and see how you like that, man. What you think about that? So you're saying that uh, Paul taught a, a resurrected Christ, and he and he's the the genesis of a resurrected Christ or the doctrine of a resurrected Christ starts with Paul. Correct, correct. I right, so okay, so in the first century, right? In the first century, early Christians, they they didn't go by Christians, they went, they went by Nazarenes. Ebionites or Essenes, okay? You only had a certain group of a certain group of sects in Jerusalem at that time. You had Sicaris, in which they were called zealots, you know what I'm saying? You had Pharisees, Sadducees, and then you had what you call Essenes or the Ebionites, okay? Or Essenes or Ebionites, some people call them Nazarenes, but they more so Essenes or Ebionites, okay? So what they taught was that uh Christ was just a regular man. So let me give you a scripture what uh real fast what, what James said real quick. This is what James said. James said for his Gentile believers, he wanted all of the blessings and benefits of the covenant, but none of his duties or obligations. He claimed the blessings of the eldest son for the youngest. Wherefore, he taught that the covenant between God and Israel had been suspended by a new covenant and that the promises once given to the children of, of Jacob would now be inherited by Gentiles. And this he ignored the teachings of Moses, who spoke with God face to face and that God's message that the covenant with Israel is forever and that God says God does for it is written. Now, listen to this. God is not man that he should be. Be fickle, nor a human being that he should change his mind, okay, which means repent. That's Numbers chapter 24 and 17, where it says son of man. So where it says son of man, that's where you know God is not a man that he should repent. You feel what I'm saying? And so um, where, where you have in the uh, Christian teachings in, in Pauline ministry that remember, they supposed to be God is supposed to be man and uh, Christ and all that. But remember, God said he is not not man, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. You feel what I'm saying? And so when you see that Christ called himself the son of man, just like he does in Ezekiel, that right there is a head banger. Let you know that there is something wrong with this doctrine, that there is not a supernatural Christ, that Christ was just a man of many sorrows. Isaiah 53 and three. You feel what I'm saying? And okay, that there so, is. Yeah. So what about John chapter two, verse 19, when it says. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. What do you do with that? Okay, I, I just broke that down. Um, uh, okay, so I follow a scholar named Robert Eisman. Okay, so that's 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 what I just broke down in my thing the other day. So what's going on there is that's a Pauline Gentile mission because according to the original scriptures, the original temple was supposed to be destroyed because of the burnt offerings and sacrifices. So there is a Pauline Gentile mission where he makes Christ to be the supernatural fi figure and makes his his Christ's body to be the temple. Now watch this. Let me show. Let me let me listen to this real fast. Let me show you. Wait, so hold on. Right who wrote? Who wrote? You saying that Paul wrote? John, no, Paul has uh, yes, yes, Pauline Christianity and the writers like the Constantine, like Constantine had um, wrote such things like that. Like, let me give you an example. Who wrote like the book said, of Matthew? Who wrote the book of Matthew? We miss that's that's we don't we don't know. I we don't we don't know because remember, the original teachers are first century. Those are second century teachers. Remember, the names weren't put on the to the, to the second, second century, so don't no, nobody no, know. No. But Matthew, yeah. Matthew and Mark goes back to first century. No, it really don't. I could because if you if you look if you look at the original Gospels of Matthew, 
the uh, it, it, it tells you that Christ was just the son of man. You feel what I'm saying? But if you look at that, that gospel of Matthew, it puts Mary in there with a supernatural Christ. So that's how you know that's not the original Matthew right there. Point blank nah, period. Nah, 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 nah. This is, yeah. this is in Matthew 26 and 21. So it What's says... That? Uh, Matthew 26 and 21, and it says, uh, um, and as they did it, he said, no, 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 what am I, hold on, hold on, real quick, real quick, let me go back, okay, Matthew, Matthew 26 and 61, and he said, this and, and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. So is that added into the Bible? Because clearly this is Christ himself saying that he's going to be resurrected. No, that's 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 yeah, Listen, that's Pauline Gentile mission. We can prove it. Listen to this. It says because of this. He became known to us as the deceiver, for he hid his deceit amongst the pleasing and tender words. And whenever he was expelled from the synagogues for teaching pagan doctrines, if you look through Acts, he was always expelled. And for misrepresenting the faith of Israel, he reviled all Jews as unbelievers before his Gentile faithful who, being innocent and knowing nothing of traditions, who, listen, listen to this, being innocent and not knowing nothing of traditions, I'm sorry, and whenever he expelled the synagogue for teaching pagan doctrines and for misrepresenting the faith of Israel, he reviled all the Jews and unbelievers before his Gentile faithful who being innocent and knowing nothing of the traditions of the laws of israel were not able to discern that he was lying to them even though we jews rejected only his pagan teachings paul proclaimed that uh, we were in fact rejecting their true religion of israel he called sweet bitter and bitter sweet when did our god tell us to drink blood nowhere in torah or where did god command us to eat human flesh nowhere in torah no mortal man or heavenly being can find such commandments nor point out the words for his gentile believers he wanted all the blessings and benefits so that's what i just read to you so you got to understand just like even in acts the acts of the apostles supposed to be not about the apostles but somehow it throws in the holy ghost where you won't find the holy ghost within torah that i that i've never seen you know I'm saying people people try to say that the the uh the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit that was with talking to uh to 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 David or whatnot, but as far as I'm concerned, it, this Holy Ghost thing really didn't come up didn't come across into this Pauline doctrine and okay, he throws so, it. Up. Know, let's yeah. let's do it, let's do it a couple of things. Micah five and one, because you said that the Messiah was not miraculous or divine, right? So let's deal with the old testament proving that this is Micah five and one. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He have laid seized against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. Who is this judge of Israel? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, King. Like, I really don't know. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Like, just like some people say numbers 24 and 17, uh, not 17, numbers 24 about, uh, about the star and uh, rising about a Jacob, you know, according, you know, even with that, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, that people that have seen, that's not even about Christ. That's supposed to be about Vespasian, you know, so I wouldn't um, know. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Micah 5 and 2 says, But thou, Bethlehem of Frada, though yeah. thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. There is a entity that has been from old from everlasting who is about to be incarnate ruler of israel this is showing some majesty and some divinity in this individual you would have to explain to me who that is and as far as the holy spirit being a new testament concept what do you do with king david speaking about the holy spirit in psalms now, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, whole, the, whole, the Holy Ghost. Like, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. Like, I don't. The Holy I, Ghost and Holy Spirit, it's, it's, there's a distinction without a difference, though. So it says, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Who's the Holy Spirit right. here? And I believe the Holy Spirit would be the Father. Holy Spirit is the Father? Correct. That's the only, that's either, yeah, the Holy Spirit would be his. Would He's be the praying father. to the Father. He's praying to the Father. And he's asking him not to take away the Holy Spirit from him. Right, right. And then only and understand there's only one God. Like he said, there's no God beside me. So it's only one person he could be talking to. Like I said, the, the, there's only one God. Okay. So how about Psalms 45? Let me, tell me how many gods are, are here. Psalms 45 and 7. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. Okay, let me get my book too. Let me get my book. Let's right, do it. Right, gotcha. Gotcha. Right, let's do it. 
All right, go go ahead, go ahead, King. Psalms forty five and seven says, "Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness." Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above. So who's the God here that his God, there's a God over this God who has anointed him above the rest of his fellows. Who are these two gods here? Hey, that's what. So it says again, it says, thou lovest thy righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God. Thy God hath anointed thee with all the rest. That's, that's the most high. It says, Thou lovest righteousness and thy wickedness. Therefore, God, which is the most high, which is your God, which is the most high, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness. He's talking about the most high. You know, when it says, Therefore, God, your uh, God, your right. God, Y H O W R, not you uh -huh. are God. This word not thy right. means your. So, right. who is the God of this God right here that I'm highlighting? So this, so let's let's go with it. So I'm not God, but let's just run this back. Say, 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 if I was God, and I'm talking to you, King David. Okay, is is saying, therefore, God, I'm talking about myself. Okay, which is your God that will be thy God. It says, have anointed thee. Okay, so when it says, therefore, God, I will be speaking of myself. Then I will say, your God, talking about thy, your God, have anointed thee, which means I have anointed you. That's that's what it's Who's saying. The Who's the V here? Huh? Who's the thee here? David, have anointed thee, David. That's well, not, that that's David. not, this isn't God speaking though. Huh? Look at this, this isn't God speaking. This is the psalmist speaking. Look at this. Let's look, look at verse six. Thy throne, O God. Who's this speaking? Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scripture of the kingdom is a right scripture. That's David, that's David, that's David speaking with the Holy Spirit of the Father. So this is David speaking. So I want. OK, so let me ask you something, King. When the scripture said that I am uh -huh. the God, of, when the scripture said I am God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, are you saying that Jesus is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? Uh, he, he's called the, the he is called sometimes the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Yes. Well, King, well, 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 what well, what have I told you this, King? Well, can you show me anywhere? Because according to this book that I have, it says that James told Paul. You call Jesus God, but I call him my brother. So when you look, look in Galatians 1 and 19, you even see that Paul calls James the Lord's brother. Okay, but you I don't want to, hold, hold on, yeah. before, we, before we go there, let's conclude this in Psalms 45. This is not a Psalm of David here. This is not a Psalm of David. All right? I just want you to know that when you look at verse 1. So when you go here, this is the, uh, another Psalm is speaking, talking to God. He's talking to God. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So this is a man speaking, the psalmist. He's speaking to God, right? Which God is this he's speaking to? Go ahead and read it for me, King. Okay, okay. thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. So this is the same psalmist speaking in verse 7. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, hath anointed you. So the thee here that I'm highlighting is the same God right here. There is a God over him who has anointed him above his fellows. You would have to deal with that, brother. Like, I don't, who's Elohim? Who's Elohim, according to you? Well, according according to our scriptures, it's, it's, it's only one God. This, this, and, that's the, and that's the Elohim Father. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Uh, like Let's I say. Let's look at Psalms chapter 8. Let's look at so, Psalms chapter 8. Let me give you, I, let me give you this. I, I, so, okay, we let's just slow down. So what about this, King? Okay, Luke 18 and 19, it says, And Jesus said unto them, why does thou call me good? For none is good except one, and that is God. Explain that. One second, one second. Yeah, because he's not on the level as the Father. The Father but, is, is above I, him in authority, power, and righteousness. Yes, the Father is above him. So all he's doing is showing the authority and the sovereignty that the Father has over everybody. When you deal with the, the hierarchy in the heavens, it's the most high, Yahweh, whatever you want to, whoever you want to call him, Yahweh. Some say Yahweh, Yahuwah. That's the Father. He's over everything, above everything, omniscient, omnipresent, om, uh, omnipotent, right? Under him, the first thing he created was the Messiah, or who the world calls Christ, who then came in the incarnation by sex with Joseph and Mary. But Christ will be the second in command over the heavenly host, which is also known as the angel of the Lord. After well, that, I you can... have... go ahead. Okay. 
Uh, I was, uh, oh, go ahead, I, go ahead, Dick. Because I want to cut you off. I want because I want to be able to finish. Go ahead and because because I can actually rebuttal all that that you say. So, but go ahead, Deacon, because I got okay, something. Okay, cool. So when we look at Psalms eight and five, and it says, "For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels." Who is this talking about? Who's the him here? Uh, from my from my understanding, that would be Aki. I, I would know that could be the man. Um, I would I would know, King. I would know. Okay. So who are yeah, these angels? Here? Who are these angels here? Uh, that should be heavenly host, correct? Heavenly host. Now let's take a look at this word in the Hebrew. Why mm -hmm. is it calling these angels Elohim? Look at this. Mm -hmm. But you say only the Father's Elohim. Can you hear me, Dick? Love you, brother. Have a good night, family. We love you. Let's move on to the next brother. All praise to the most high. All right. So anybody else want to come on? Let's give everybody, let's give everybody a time to come on here because I'm about to close out. I'm about to close out. I'm about to close out. So let's get a couple more people. Where's that Muslim dude at? Where is that Muslim dude? Let's get that Muslim guy on here. And if not, I told you guys I got health complications, so keep praying for me. I don't want to have any strife. We're going to do a peaceful, no yelling, no cutting each other off. I got a little bit more time. Let's let that Muslim guy come on here real quick. All right. All right. So, um, oh, yeah, let me until we get that Muslim guy on, I want to. I want to. Uh, I want to finish this with Sam, Sam Kelly. If you guys are just now tuning in, we're going in on Sam Kelly because this is what he said. He wants to do Sam Kelly because he wants to pee on women. My goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to rape that whore. And then also sodomize you, you filthy dog for threatening my daughters. Come see me face to face and threaten my daughters. I'll send you to where Muhammad is, who's in hell. And your mother is a whore of the Shia. Live with it, Khalid Habib, you stupid bastard. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So that's what we're dealing with right now. Sam Sam Kelly, R. Kelly's distant brother who likes to piss on women, right? Vocab Malone's elder. It's just completely against the scriptures, man. You know what I'm saying? So let's go to Matthew, Matthew 7 and 2. Sorry, I'm about to be done, all right? Matthew 7 and 2. It says, uh, uh, the water truly is real. Great, greatly appreciate you guys. Now, listen, I don't mind having health complications. I don't mind being sick. I don't even mind dying. But the reason why I want to be healthy and live is to do the most high's work and build the kingdom. So uh, I like to be in a in a feeling well as I'm ministering and, and trying to edify the body. So that is the purpose. If I'm not serving the most high, I shouldn't even be breathing. But because I am, I pray for 100% health, all praises. But look at this, Matthew 7 and 2, Matthew 7 and 2. This is what we have to live by, y'all. Look at this. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. What does this mean? What does this mean? If you go, if all you do is go around making rebuke videos and trying to judge people and saying they're wrong or wicked, that same measure is going to come to you. So, Sam, you doing this, you doing this, you you behaving like this, you conducting yourself like this, all it's all it's going to happen is going to come back to you. So you got to be ready for that. You have to be ready, and it's coming back to you not in an evil way, scripturally slashing you right now, scripturally slashing you, and proving that you have to be on some type of uncontrollable drug. Right. 
So when we go back to, it says, for what measure, for what, uh, blah, blah, blah. for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. So we have to be balanced. Yes, we make rebuke, rebuke videos. Yes, we make uh, videos casting judgment, but that's not all you <laughs> should be doing or that same pressure that same energy is going to come on you uh matthew 6 and 14 for if you forgive others their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you right and so you should have just let that go some some muslim cat in dubai talking crazy on your chat come on man let it go but you are probably coming down off the brown coming down off the meth and you're very irate tyrannical and discombobulated, very disgruntled. This is Psalms 109 and 17. Psalms 109 and 17, look what it says. He loved to pronounce a curse. He loved to pronounce, I'm sorry, he loved to curse others, now you curse him. He never blessed others, now you don't bless him. And this is all Sam Shimon does when he goes on his lives he's always like saying crazy stuff like this so this is what he's got coming back from the most high um romans chapter 12 romans chapter 12 verse 17 i'm just reading any translation these aren't deep dark sayings here never pay back evil with more evil never pay back evil with more evil because he claims allegedly that some guy threatened his daughters via chat. Who gives a who gives a hell? Right? It's, it's a goddamn chat. You know how many people talk crazy on my chat? We don't get all irate over that. So it says, never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. You could have took this time to say. You know, guys, um, you know, uh, this guy threatened my daughters. I want everybody to pray for his daughters. You could have said that. He threatened my daughters. Let's everybody pray for his daughters. Let's pray for him and his family. And let's just remove him from the chat with saying obscene things like that. That was your chance to show yourself honorable. But you didn't. You failed the test because you're not of the you're not of the Heavenly Father. And neither can you ever be. You can't even fake it, right? Let's go to verse 18. Verse 18. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone, right? In particular, I want verse 19. I want verse 19. Uh beloved never avenge yourselves but leave it to the wrath of god for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord willie mack the water brother for the super chat donation greatly appreciate you somebody says autism proud says praise jesus christ amen well autism proud uh who does jesus christ worship you're saying that we need to worship Jesus Christ, but who does Jesus Christ worship? Shouldn't we, we worship who he worships? Who does Jesus Christ worship? Now, this question is to the Muslim in the chat who's saying he can't get on. It's okay. I'm out, I got a question for this Muslim in the chat who can't click the link. I got a question for the Muslim in the chat who can't click the link. So let's go to Matthew 5. This is for the Muslim in the chat. This is for the Muslim in the chat. All right. So Matthew 5 this is for the Muslim. Matthew 5, 17 says that the, the Muslims uh, believe in Jesus 
more than Christians. So let's just take a look at this. That's a goddamn lie. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Well, 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 I think Muslims and Christians are both the same. You guys don't follow the Quran or the Bible. So you guys are both the same. But I got, I got to get your understanding on this. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, the least commandments of the Mosaic law. And shall teach men so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So I got to ask you this Muslim, Muslim man in the chat. According to Jesus Christ, he said, the law and the prophets are not done away with. And you have to keep them all till all be fulfilled. All is not fulfilled. And it says, if you teach to break the least of the commandments, there will be a penalty for you. So do you keep the Mosaic law? Because Jesus Christ is teaching us that you have to keep them. And you have to teach men to keep them and do them. Do you, do you keep the Mosaic law, Muslim man, in the chat? That's what we want to know. Where's the Muslim man in the chat? Where is the Muslim man in the chat? Did he run away? Where you at, my boy? Where you at? We'll wait for him to um, to answer that. My brother CJ, Shalom King, what's going on, God? Hey, Shalom, speaking us. How you doing? With this little bug out. <laughs> Which one? Uh, I mean, there's a lot, but the one that came before uh, the the vegan. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, the vegan brother. He, he hopefully he's all right, man. Sometimes though, repentance is closed. Yeah. Sometimes you go far deep into false doctrine that repentance is closed because who is the reason why people go into false doctrine? I mean, it is Satan because it says Satan is the god of this world who have blinded the minds. But who told Satan to go do it? The heavenly Father, right? Because the Bible says the heavenly Father has. <laughs> sent us uh sent them strong delusion look at my brother from uh battle axes all <laughs> praises to the battle axe down there in texas doing a marvelous work all praises to the brother battle axes he's hiding under his prayer rug i know he is brother tell him <laughs> all, no god but go ahead cj yeah um i came with uh not, not we can say smoke or dialogue I know you uh, got some smoke. I'm, listen, I'm having health complications, but for you, I'm turning up. What's good? Let's get it in. So, do you know about? Um, I heard you say that your 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 perspective before, but I used to have the same perspective as you before. But there's something that is kind of making me some information that I'm kind of making me change. Do you know about Proverbs eight and twenty two? Right. Oh, wisdom. Yeah yeah what about it so you know there is people that say that that is talking about christ mm -hmm. so why would you say i just want to hear your perspective before i tell you why i'm starting to believe in that he is talking about christ why would you say that is not referring to yahweh shai per se because it says it's about wisdom yes because wisdom is always uh described as a feminine spirit so as a feminine saying, spirit lord, yeah if you're saying our lord is feminine then you know we got a bigger problem well <sighs> have a good night so I can wait, wait, wait 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 i'm gonna show you something that you don't know you know proverbs you, you know you know hebrews hebrews one and three right what, what where it says hebrews one and three where it says that he's the express image and the and the uh yeah the, the character the character yeah 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 now you know paul is getting that somewhere 
I mean, not Paul. Let's say whoever the whole wrote Hebrews. You know, he is getting that somewhere, right? Where is he getting it from? Have you read Wisdom of Solomon you Seven? You can make them their food. That's fine. I'm about to close up. All right. Had you read Had you read Wisdom of Solomon Seven? Wisdom of Solomon Chapter Seven. Yeah. Of course I have. Okay, read verse twenty five to twenty six. Wisdom of Solomon seven twenty five to twenty six. You're about yeah. to go down. I'm about to cut you, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, not only that before before because that's the major reason. The thing is uh, that the early church, the early church. Now I, I, you're getting into see CJ. I'm gonna have to put you on time. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> So you said you said what verse? I need wisdom. Of, wisdom of Solomon, I seven and twenty-five, twenty-six. I think it is. Okay, seven twenty-five. Right. It says, "Wisdom is the warm breath of God's power. She pours forth from all powerful ones, purge glory, a oh, pure glory, Salakia. Therefore, nothing impure can enter her. She is the right." And you're saying that this is Christ. You're calling Christ a she. 26. I'm not saying necessarily that he is a she. What I believe, like, because this is what I believe, right? I'm not saying that Christ is a feminine spirit, but what I'm saying is that, like, for example, Christ is the word, right? So what I believe is that, because also, you know, who also, I, 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 and I disagree with him with the with the interpretation. Like, I first found it in some work, but then I I started investigating. And then it was uh, this dude, this Edomite, Michael Heiser, right? Uh, you got to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> you be now, I'll be, I'll be honest, too, though. I, I learned from Dr. Michael Heiser. I mean, he, it's not like he's got deep breakdowns. I'll say this. Let me rephrase that. I've learned a few small things from Dr. Michael Heiser. I mean, like the brother who came on here said, Christianity got like 25% of the right doctrine and that's pushing it. So these yeah. Christians will say some things that are true, but you got to be careful by and large. Dr. Michael Heiser is bugged out. Yeah. But before, before, yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're trying to say, but Paul even calls Christ the, the, the wisdom and power of God in Corinthians. Okay. So, so I'm not saying that Christ is a feminine spirit though. Let me explain you what I'm trying to say. Christ is the word of God, right? So what I believe is that the word, oh, that this is what I'm trying to say, what I believe, right? The word of God and wisdom always was with God, right? Or always existed along with him. What I'm saying is that he wanted to impersonate it. Okay, well, let me tell you this, though. If you're going to say that wisdom is, that Christ is the wisdom, and wisdom was always with the Father, right? That means Christ is not a created being, and He's always coexisted. Thanks for helping the Trinitarians out. See, not right? necessarily, though, because <laughs> if, if let's say if you have if you have a like, let's say you have a song or like a, an idea of making a phone, right? You have the idea in your mind, but the product is not even there. So that necessarily doesn't mean that. You because the Trinity doesn't teach the Trinity teach that Christ is eternally begotten. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that Christ was. You say that if you say Christ is wisdom, and that wisdom was always with the Father, then that means that you support the Trinity, co-equal, co-eternal. Maybe not the co-equal part, but the co-eternal part. You're helping. You're helping out the Trinity now. Have a good night, CJ. <laughs> All right, brother. But I'm about to close out. I would say think on that, man. I would say think on that. I would never do that. You'd be helping Christianity. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Oh, the last thing was about uh, so you're saying that thing about Timothy is talking about King, well, about um uh, telling God to uh, uh I don't know, you uh, about first Timothy uh four, I think it was or three, uh where first I was saying when I was talking to you about an Instagram about um, that is scripture I sent you in, in Timothy. Oh, Alan Cuban, that's a good point. He said, if Christ is wisdom, then he would know everything, and we know he's not omniscient. So that's a good point. That's a good. He's point. Solomon, right? Do we believe he's Solomon? Yeah. But Solomon God tells. 
No, he doesn't, but did God make Solomon the most wisest nigga in the earth? Yeah, most wisest, but that don't mean he is wisdom. I know, but does it but necessarily mean that he's a mission, but I mean, I don't know. I, I'll I'll keep looking to it. What did you ask me on Instagram? I forgot. He was about first Timothy uh two and one. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So when he says pray for kings and people in authority, yeah, yeah, because it kind of make it seem like Oh, pray for all men and intersect for all men. Like that's how I kind of see it. And I'm I'm a little confused. I'm saying like this is something wrong here or what Listen, is going on? I pray here? for I pray for Joe Biden. I pray for Joe Biden that he implements all hell, that he ushers in World War Three. <laughs> and I also pray for it. Now back then, they were probably praying for the kings and princes and rulers. To treat them right in their subjugation they could have been praying for that but oh. in this time i'm not praying that they treat us right in our subjugation i'm praying that these kings and authorities and rulers usher in the, the mark of the beast world war three martial law famine and everything else so that we can get this shit over with and get the hell out of here okay okay so i get i get what you're saying because I, I okay I, I guess i get what you're saying it kind of seems like it's i don't know i'm a little I'm a little scared. And also, I forgot about Clement of Rome, right? So you said you read the whole letter of uh, First Clement. Mm -hmm. There is a part where he talks about a symbol of Christ dying with Rahab. What, is, what was he trying to say? That there was something symbolic on that. Um, I don't remember Andre, the verse. What is Andre Anderson talking about? Andre Anderson, uh, the water Moshe, greatly appreciate you, brother. Yahweh, Hashem, break a thumb. Hebrew Israelites must come out of Babylon the Great. No, the Bible says that we'll be uh. saved. Israelites that are here will be saved here. Ain't nobody got to leave. We're not Freddy cats. Somebody said, no way Deacon Cray Cray, Yahweh, Shai is Solomon. Huh? Well, I mean, look, you don't have to believe that. But I got some scriptures that hit you right in your mouth and you wouldn't even know how to deal with them. So. Stay in your lane unless you want to come on here and catch the smoke. But I have to look at at, at the letter at the uh, the verse you're talking about, CJ. You got it pulled up. Uh the, the thing is, I can't leave the app because I got it on my file. Okay, well, send it to me on Instagram then. All right, I'm gonna okay. close up out of here, man. We reached our two hour minute mark. <clears throat> All right, Deacon. Shalom. Man. All right, King. Shalom, on God. All right, y'all. All praise, honor, and glory, man. This is crazy, y'all. Let me tell you what never to be like. All you Christians, come out of all you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are Christians, come out of that white supremacist evil cult. And 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 vocab alone, check your elder, man. My goal is to get your mother and piss on her and get the Shia to rape that whore, and then also sodomize you, you filthy dog, for threatening my daughters. Come see me face to face and threaten my daughters. I'll send you to where Muhammad is, who's in hell. And your mother is a whore of the Shia. Live with it, Khalid Habib, you stupid bastard. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Shia already put sugar on your mother, that whore, when they molest. Andre says he'd rather smoke indica. All right, bro. Well, hey, you know what they're saying, man, that there's a uh, fentanyl in weed. Let's hope that your punk ass don't overdose smoking weed laced with fentanyl and the most high had to judge you and correct you that way while you're burning your brain cells and putting smoke in your lungs that's not meant to be. Why you think you cough it like you're hacking up a lung when you smoke weed? Have a good night. Anyway, I'm going to end this by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, and we do so by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Andre Anderson tried to come on here and get me out of character with my health complications. You see how cold he is? You see how evil he is? Knowing I'm having issues right now. And he want to try to, he want to try to trigger my issues. Let me go ahead and get off here, y'all. Lord willing, oh, I got to make an announcement. You guys are going to love this lesson that I'm working on in the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shai. You guys know in the Garden of Eden, there were trees and the trees represent nations. We can prove this. And what did the Lord say to Adam and Eve? That they could eat from all the trees except for the tree of good and evil. So what did that mean? That meant that 
they can deal with the trees represent nations the fruit from the trees represent the doctrine or philosophies of those nations so there are certain parts of philosophy and doctrine that we can learn from these other nations except for that nation that was of good and evil so i'm going into certain philosophies of other ancient cultures and civilizations that are not uh our our people and showing how they do have certain tenets that actually are cohesive with our biblical principles as well so this series is going to be called you can eat from the trees part one you can eat from the trees part two you can eat from the trees part three i'm going to some of the Upanishads, the Bhagavadas, the, the, the Sanskrit, um, um, all these so-called religions that have certain tenets that line up with ours is going to be very dope and edifying, Lord willing, and through the Spirit. So I'm going to give all praise and honor glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. We do so, Bashem, Mashiach, Yahweh, Shai. Till next time, Shalom, y'all.